Today, we estimate the amount of coil we need to install a standing seam metal roof project. What's up guys, I'm Thad Barnett and welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. If you're a roofer about to install a standing seam metal roof, or any roof for that matter, estimating materials should be an important part of your process. Order too much material and you cut down on your profits, but if you order too little, you risk extended lead times that can often stretch out a job. In this video, I'm going to show you how to estimate the amount of coil you need to roll form and install standing seam metal roofing panels for your project. First, we're going to do it by hand by using a few different formulas, and then if you stay to the end of the video, I'll show you how to use a free calculator which you can download in the description to help speed up your workflow. One thing to note is that this method helps you estimate the amount of material for panels only, not trim. In a future video, we'll take a look at estimating for trim as well. So there's three main factors that go into determining the amount of coil you'll need for your job. They are panel profile, roof coverage, and waste factor. And once you have these three pieces of information, you can figure out almost any standing seam project by using this method. Every panel profile requires a different width of coil to produce a finished panel. So the first thing you need to know is what panel profile you're going to be using. If you remember back from our cost video, we took some field measurements to estimate the cost of a metal roof for Adam's house. So let's take that info and calculate the amount of coil we need for that job. Adam decided that he wants to go with the inch and a half snap lock option. So I've got that right here. Now this is a 16 inch wide panel and it requires a 20 inch coil to produce it. All this information you can find on every panel profile's cut sheet. The second piece of information that we need is roof coverage. Most roofing is measured in squares, but we need to convert that to square footage. One square is equal to 100 square feet. And from our field measurements, we know that Adam's roof is 30 squares, which is equal to 3,000 square feet. That is the actual roof size that we need to cover with our panels. This step makes or breaks the entire estimating process. Two waste factors must be added. The first is seam factor, and the second is material waste. Seam factor is how much the coil has to shrink down during the roll forming process in order to create the seams of any given profile. We've already talked about this a little bit, but you can find the seam factor in the cut sheet of any panel profile, and it will vary if you change the width of the panels. For the inch and a half snap lock panel that we have here and that Adam chose, it has a seam factor according to the cut sheet of 1.25 meaning that out of the 20 inch coil that we started with, it will use about four inches of that coil to produce the seams for this panel profile. So we take Adam's 3000 square foot roof and multiply it by the seam factor of 1.25 to get 3,750 square feet. This number is the actual quantity of material required to cover the roof. But we're not done yet. We have one more waste factor to include and that's material waste. Material waste is the amount of material you expect to lose at a job site. This can be due to how cut up the roof is, the installation experience of your crew, and accuracy of field measurements. It will vary from project to project and is entirely up to you. Adam has a pretty simple up and over gable roof with just two valleys and we have a well seasoned crew working on it. So I'm going to choose a waste factor of 10%. So we just calculated our roof coverage number using our seam factor and that gave us 3,750 square feet. We're going to multiply that by our waste factor of 10% or 1.10 and that will give us 4,125 square feet. This is the total amount of material we need to order from the manufacturer for our roof panels. It's also a good idea to utilize a takeoff service before you order material just to get a second set of eyes and help verify any field measurements for your project. If you're a customer of Sheffield Metals, we do this for you for free. Now I've got the takeoff for Adam's roof, let's check that out and see how accurate we were. All right, so here's the takeoff for Adam's roof. You can see this up and over gable roof with these two valleys right here. Let's scroll down and see how accurate our field measurements were. All right, here's our coverage summary and our service area, 2,915.03 square feet. So it looks like we were pretty much dead on there. And with our waste factor, we are good to go. Next, let's look at how we can speed up this process by using a calculator. And again, you can follow along and download this for free in the description. 
It's very simple. There's only four blanks that you have to fill in with the information that we already used. The first two is coil width and panel width. We know from our cut sheet, our inch and a half snap lock panel uses a 20 inch wide coil to create a 16 inch wide panel. We know from our field measurements and takeoff that Adam's roof is approximately 3,000 square feet. Finally, we enter our waste factor, which is how much extra material we expect to need based on complexity of the roof, experience of our crew, and accuracy of our field measurements. We chose a 10% waste factor. And there we go. All the calculations that we went through earlier have been automatically completed. Here on the right, you can see that we need 4,125 square feet of material, which matches our number from earlier. This calculator also includes how much the square footage translates to linear feet of coil and the theoretical poundage of the metal coil. Now the poundage is based on 24 gauge steel only, but the square footage and linear footage is the same no matter what the material is. I hope this helps you better understand how to estimate the amount of coil needed for your standing seam metal roofing job. Make sure you stay tuned for the video on how to calculate trim. Comment below if you have any questions or if you found any tips or tricks that would help someone new to the estimation process. I'd love to hear about them. Subscribe to the Metal Roofing channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and I'll catch you next time.